to build up on the previous lesson, which we explained the basics of an ecosystem, we'll look at how energy starts out in an ecosystem and how it's transferred from an organism to another. Energy in an ecosystem is one of the main concepts of ecology and it studies the interactions of organisms through the energy. As we all know, energy starts out from the sun, and the only organisms capable of processing this energy would be producers who use photosynthesis. But for now, we'll focus on the main energy source, which is autotrophs. Most of them are producers who use autosynthesis, but autotroph is not limited to that, and you must not make that mistake. An autotroph is any organism capable of making its own food, and heterotroph is any organism that relies on other organisms to consume to get its energy. Well, you might want to say all producers use photosynthesis, there are bacteria that use deep sea energy vents for their energy. Heterotrophs are very simple. They get their food by consuming other organisms directly. Autotrophs make their own food. That's all there is. Whether it is from sunlight, from chemical synthesis, that does not matter. We'll start with the heterotrophs. There are four kinds of heterotrophs, and there are three very important types. There are the herbivores, plant eaters, carnivores, meat eaters, the detritivores, which eat plant and animal remains, such as dead animals, such as the fungus shown right here, or decaying animals. And then there are omnivores, which is a combination of both herbivores and carnivores. They eat both plants and meat. But they do not eat decaying corpses, like the tritivores. Now, to simplify the energy transfers in an ecosystem, we distribute them into trophic levels. We distribute them into food chains and food webs. We'll start by explaining what a trophic level is and how it, its energy is distributed. A trophic level is each step in one of the food chains or food webs. Such as, we start with the producer, and then we move to the primary grasshopper. This right here, this is a trophic level, and then there's another trophic level, this arrow right here, this jump. And then we jump from grasshopper to snake, another trophic level. And then we jump from the snake to the hawk, a third trophic level. And trophic level generally can generally start, no, not generally, they always start with the producer, then the herbivore, and then generally above that, it will be either a carnivore or an omnivore. And if there is an exception like Venus flytrap mentioned in the previous lesson, or ladybugs and praying mantises. Let us elaborate on our previous point, trophic level. To, we use trophic levels when building food chains which is a linear progression system from one trophic level to the other. We only have one organism at each level, and we use arrows to show a relation for, from them. So from plant to grasshopper, grasshopper to mouth, mouth to snake. We keep it simple, only one organism at each trophic level, and we use it to show how much energy goes through the ecosystem. Let's take a look at food webs. Food webs expand on the concept of a food chain. So rather than one arrow leading from the creature being consumed to the other, we have multiple food chains connected together. As you could see here, you have the kangaroo rat, which is the bottom herbivore, which eats seeds. And then the kangaroo rat is eaten by the coyote, as shown by this arrow but the kangaroo rat could also be eaten by the weasel and they can be eaten by the rattlesnake. So as you can see, there are multiple predators for the same prey. Another point is there isn't the same prey. For example, the coyote here, while it is able to feed on the kangaroo rat, the coyote is not limited to the kangaroo rat. The coyote is able to eat the kangaroo rat, it's able to eat the gambles quail, 
It's able to eat a roadrunner and even a jackrabbit. Each one of these is its own food chain. So let's take an example of one food chain inside this massive food web. Let's take from kangaroo rat all the way to the Chihuahuan River. The kangaroo rat eats the seeds of the plant and then it is eaten by the ridge nose rattlesnake. And then the rattlesnake is eaten by the Chihuahuan raven. This in its own right is a food chain. But what makes it a food web is we do not have only this food chain, we also have the coyote, kangaroo rat, and plant chain, where the kangaroo rat eats the seeds and it's eaten by the coyote. Another food chain we could see here is the roadrunner food chain. The roadrunner will eat small lizard like creatures, and then the roadrunner itself is eaten by the coyote. And so far, we've only talked about three of the food chains that are here, which is why a food web is a massive pathway of connected food chains in the same ecosystem. And you could use one food web for an entire ecosystem, but you cannot use one food chain for an entire ecosystem. We can encompass traffic levels in another manner. In permits, there are four permits of life, and you can use them to encompass energy, biomass, or numbers. They are used in the very same manner of traffic levels, and we'll start with the very basic permit of life. We'll just experience which, what kind of organism is in each trophic level. We're gonna start by photons from the sun, outside the permit because they are not organisms, then the photosynthesizing organisms. As you can see, they are at the base of the pyramid because they are in greater numbers. And then we'll go towards herbivores. They're above photosynthesizing organisms because they are above them at a trophic level. And they are smaller because there are less of them than photosynthesizing organisms. Then at the very top, carnivores. We have the least amount of them. They take the smallest space. And they are at the top because they eat herbivores, which eat photosynthesizing organisms. And then we have the pyramid of energy. This shows us how much energy is transferred throughout the ecosystem from one trophic level to another. A key note you must know is that in every single pyramid, so in the pyramid of life, which is the basic one, in the ecological pyramids and the two more pyramids after this, the more you go up, the more energy is lost. You are not responsible for the three other pyramids ratio of loss of energy, but for this one you must know that 90% of the energy is lost, or only one-tenth is transferred. So let's take an example. Let's take a marine example. Let's say the, right here we have algae. Algae is capable of producing 10,000 kilocalories. And then a salmon comes in, or no, not a salmon. Let's take a goldfish comes in and eats the algae. The goldfish will gain only one tenth of the energy in that algae. So rather than getting 10,000, it will gain 1,000. And then it's eaten by salmon. So the salmon will gain 100 calories or one tenth of the 1,000 that the goldfish gained. And then the salmon is eaten by a shark. The shark will gain one tenth of what the salmon gained. Therefore, the shark will only gain 10 kilocalories. And you must know that this energy is lost due to heat. Now, the heat could be because of the organism using it. The heat could be because of the process of eating. But you must know that this energy is lost as heat. 90% of the energy is lost. Why? Heat. How? Heat. You must know it is just lost due to thermal energy between the trophic level. And then we go by the same rule in the pyramid of biomass. And biomass is just weight not including water weight. Or you could say dry weight. So, as we can see, just like the other pyramid, it's a pyramid shape because the up the higher you go, the less you have. So producers, no matter what 
type they are, they will always have the greatest weight, not including water weight or dry weight per meter square. And then as you go up, their weight density will go down. So herbivores are less dense than Atlantis. And they take less, they have less weight in the ecosystem per meter square once again. And then carnivores have even less, and then the top carnivores have even less. You are not responsible for how much is lost each time you go above a trophic level. You just need to know that it goes down. Now, a key point here is we say dry weight because we do not want to include water weight because then the balance is skewed because water weight doesn't mean much. And another thing, we say dry weight in kilograms per meter squared. Because if we were to take the entire weight of trees in the ecosystem, we wouldn't get a variable measurement. I have a bigger forest here, it would have more dry weight, but we want them to be proportional. That's why we calculate the dry weight per meter square of the ecosystem. So you take one meter of the ecosystem and you take the average weight of each organism in it. Now, you may not be asked about this knowledge, but it is important knowledge to have because it is possible to be asked about it in the quiz. This brings us to the ecological pyramid of number. Each level, while it may be deceiving, while you may think that each level represents the number of organisms, that's not it. What they mean, what they really mean by the ecological pyramid of numbers is the ecological pyramid of consume organism number. So for example, we start by the very bottom plant. It's at the bottom. It does not consume other organisms directly. We'll call it T1. We'll go up, tier two. It consumes the plant. Above it, tier three, because it's a carnivore that consumes the tier below it, and the tier below it consumes the tier below it. So it's additive. So let's say tier three consumes tier three tiers below it. Then you add one tier for the hawk. Because the hawk consumes the amount of tiers consumed by the number below it, and then it consumes the tier it is consuming physically. So you add every time you go up, you add plus one. Once again, this goes against the rule you may you know of that the number decreases, but, the, but here we are considering the number of organisms consumed, and this is the exception. And that is all for lessons. So as far as you must know, you must know autotrophs, heterotrophs, and autotrophs being producers, heterotrophs consumers. You must know the four kinds of heterotrophs. You must know that autotrophs are not limited to plants and photosynthesizing things because there are chemical synthesizing and heat synthesizing beings. And you must know the pyramids of ecology. And you should know that each pyramid, it decreases, it decreases as you go up. And uh, in the energy pyramid, you must know that it decreases by 90%. Only one-tenth is transferred up. And that would be all of our lesson in a simple 15 minutes or so. That will be it for lesson 2.2, flow of energy in an ecosystem. If you have any questions whatsoever, want to ask anything at all, you can ask it down below in the comments section or in the Discord server. Uh, if you want more tutorials or videos on the biology lessons or on any other subjects, you can find it on the channel. Uh, and yeah, enjoy them.